Welcome back. If you're just joining us, today we want to explore whether you can do without sugar. And what does sugar mean for your diet? But also, what does the absence of sugar do to your diet? Sit closer to me, I have Isaac Ithuku. He is a fitness consultant. And on my far left, Dr. Esther Dindi. She is a consultant, physician, plus a wellness expert and founder of Dr. Fitness Kenya. It's so good to have you guys here with us. So, Dr. Esther, let me begin with you. This whole Mercury talk has Kenyans deciding whether they want to have sugar or not. Let's talk about the importance of sugar within our diet and why it's such a... That's, because it's in every household, low income, middle income to high income, sugar is everywhere. So what's the importance of sugar within our diet? I would say many things and I would love to start by defining. Of course, most of us know mm -hmm. sugar as the crystallized substance that we use to add onto our foods. Mm -hmm. But the, when we start defining uh, sugar medically, because there's even what we call the blood sugar, which is primarily blood, glucose, which is found you know, in our bloodstream. Um, so there are different ways of looking at sugar. Sugar, the table sugar as we know it is actually what we call sucrose. It's a mixture of two monosaccharides, as in the simplest of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. what we call fructose and glucose. But uh, in terms of refined carbohydrates, when they are broken down into their simplest form, which is glucose, that's also a form of sugar. So um, sugar is important in our diet because it gives us energy, but how we get it is very important, not just from the added, added, uh, you know, added sugar in our diet. Added sugar is a big problem, and I think we'll be talking about that. Added sugar. What do we mean by added sugar? Added sugar is, is having that substance, whether it's sucrose or refined carbohydrates, that's added into your foods. So this could be actually table sugar as we know it. It could be high fructose corn syrup that's added in most of the refined foods. It could be maple syrup. It could be honey and, and many other substances. Of course, we have the sugar substitutes, but those ones have no calories. But the main sugar added in foods is, is actually sugar and other processed forms of sugar like fructose uh, corn syrup. Right. Isaac, what does having too much sugar within your body, how does that affect your physical appearance or rather your physical exercise for someone who is very keen on that? Mm. Okay, so basically what happens is um, when you take in a lot of sugar, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, uh, the sugar levels, the blood sugar is gonna spike up. Mm -hmm. uh, this sends some do uh, dopamine levels, uh, dopamine uh, uh, releases in your brain. Your brain, your body literally likes the sugar. Mm -hmm. You get a spike of energy. That's why you see kids running around when, when they have some, you know, uh -huh. candy, sugar, all of that. So um, this sugar, especially simple sugar, spikes up very fast, but it also drops very fast. So after it drops, then you crave it, then the cycle keeps going around and around. This is for simple sugar. Right. However, you can have complex, complex uh, uh, version of sugar, complex carbohydrates. This is where you find... Uh, uh, like whole foods, mm -hmm. maybe like uh, oats, uh, sweet potatoes, stuff like that. Uh, it takes longer for this sugar, this kind of sugar, to go up, uh, to be released. The energy levels are released slowly. Mm -hmm. So rarely will you find someone jumping around just because they had a sweet potato. Well, now that explains sugar rush and where that aspect comes mm -hmm. from. Dr. Esther, is there a difference between, in terms of health, especially in this day and age when so much things are refined and when you can mimic color, um, is there a difference between brown sugar and white sugar? Is brown sugar more healthy? Because that's the stereotype out there. Is it true? And is there a difference in, if I take white sugar or brown sugar in my diet? Actually, to, to be precise, there's hardly any difference between the brown, brown sugar, white sugar, honey, sugar. They are all actually sugar. And the effect on the blood is, is very much uh, similar. Mm -hmm. And like he's already alluded to, there the are many effects that we have when we consume uh, simple sugars. Of course, when you look at sugar, again, there's, there's the processed and there's what's natural. Mm -hmm. What's natural, we are talking about fruits and vegetables and of course our complex carbohydrates. All these things are eventually broken down to sugar, but the rate at which they're broken down has, uh, you know, slows, you know, is, is, is slows the rate at which you're going to get hungry next, uh, the rate at which you're going to have cravings. And just besides that rush that you get, there's another effect on our bodies. What happens is that we are meant to have a certain level of sugar in the blood. If this goes to an excess, you know, the moment you consume food and it's, it's, it's digested and broken down now to release the sugar, there's 
a hormone release from our body. There's something behind the stomach, an organ called pancreas. It has some special cells that release mm -hmm. the hormone insulin. And this is, uh, it's, it's like a cop to ensure that the sugar levels remain within uh, a certain good level. So what happens if you're consuming a lot of sugar, then it has to be dumped somewhere. And what happens is uh, the insulin goes opening the cells, the, the, the fat cells and tell them, take up sugar, take up sugar. So if we keep consuming a lot of sugar, then what happens with time we tire our pancreas and we start developing what we call insulin resistance. And the biggest issue with sugar is because it, it puts us, puts us as at risk of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, fatty liver, and, and, and even some cancers. And how does this happen? It's the way in which sugar is, 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 is metabolized in the body. Sugar has another component. I said it has both glucose and fructose. Fructose is only 100% processed in the liver. It can't be processed anywhere. You won't find fructose in the, in the blood. So what happens, it's actually processed like fat. So a bit of it will be stored as glycogen, which is the stored form of sugar, which we can easily you know, utilize for energy. But most of it will be stored as fat. And this kind of fat is the bad fat. We call the very low density lipoproteins or the triglycerides. So um, these ones are stored around the organs as visceral fat. They tend to float in, in, the, in our blood pipes, mm -hmm. that is the arteries, and clog them. So it puts us at risk of heart disease, of stroke, and, and, and much more. I think sugar is really the new poison before we add any mercury right? into and, it. And I'm glad you've <laughs> talked about some of the diseases. You've said diabetes, a few cancer and, and heart attacks. What other diseases um, could too much of sugar or even less of it, what diseases does it come with? Uh, I've already talked about, because, okay, like... At the, at the core of, of, of excessive, excessive, I'm, I'm keen to say the excessive yeah. sugar consumption is something called insulin resistance right. that tends to promote all these other conditions. So, of course, uh, when you're consuming a lot of sugar, sugar is meant to be energy. So if you're not, I say that if you can't burn it, don't consume it. And it's very hard, my colleague here knows, it's, it's very hard to, to, to know to exercise enough to be able to, to burn calories from sugar and, and from excessive consumption of any food. So the thing is, we have to limit how much we take because if we take in excess, then we end up with these conditions. We, we are at risk of obesity with its many complications. Isaac, please, please add to what Dr. Esther said, especially now that you're, you're a fitness consultant, yeah. how sugar... Can, I didn't know that sugar would have such an impact oh, when it yes. comes to your exercising because I think we just think fats are the ones that make exercising so difficult, but sugar also plays such a great role. Yes, yes, it does play a big role because uh, excessive sugar, as she said, ends up being stored as fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's stored all over the place and mostly like uh, belly fat and stuff like that. And it's difficult to then get it's rid of it? It's very difficult to get rid of it. All right, and um, Isaac, you had mentioned the aspect of what too much sugar does to your body, the whole sugar rush, what does lack of sugar then do to your body? Because then again, you can't get rid of it completely. You still yes. need a certain healthy amount of it. Yes. So what does lack of sugar then do to your body? Well, with lack of sugar, you get, uh, you know, you have a decreased uh, amount of energy, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of uh, having a lot of sugar. But uh, the best thing to do that I will advise is for someone to switch up the diet so that you're actually taking in healthy sugars, mm -hmm. yeah, which, is a, which are complex carbohydrates. Now, spell that out for us. Healthy mm -hmm. sugar. Um, is this like syrup or honey? No, 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 no. no. This is, yeah, this is why I, this is why I spelled out um, complex carbohydrates as uh, uh, foods that take longer. This energy takes longer to be released okay. into your blood. It's released slowly by slowly. Like, for instance, if you eat oats, if you eat, uh, oats in the morning, it'll, you can go maybe up to 12, 1, 2, before you actually feel hungry ah. again. Same thing with uh, sweet potatoes. There's so many of these complex carbohydrates that you can have. So the, the, the whole point is you can't really, you're not really eliminating it completely. Uh, you're taking a better version of it, which is healthier for you. Or if you really need to, you can maybe find a balance where you take it once in a while. The problem is people take it too often, you see? Like... They want sugar in their tea, they want a soda later on in the afternoon, they want a cake probably with it, cookies, that's a problem. Aren't we guilty? Dr. Esther, yes. So, um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is that we, we are unlikely to ever be 
deficient of sugar in our bodies. Because um, there, there are many processes, even if you've not consumed sugar, I alluded to the fact that there's some stored sugar in our body, what we call glycogen. It's the stored form of glucose, our energy in the body. So it's found in the liver, it's found in the muscles. And you'd need to fast for very long or, uh, or, or, or really be deficient for, for, for a number of days or exercise, like run a long marathon without mm. consuming anything mm. for you to be able to deplete that glycogen. And why it's hard to lose fat when you're consuming a lot of sugar is because until you deplete your glycogen, you're very unlikely to tap into your fat stores. You're very unlikely to start breaking the already stored fat to use it as energy. And, and as Isaac has said, it, it's better to focus on consuming healthier forms of, of carbohydrates and uh, of sugars. And this is where fruits come in. They're part of a healthy diet. But if you consume them in excess still, and however healthy uh, food is, if you consume in excess of what your body needs, you're still going to store it as fat. But medically speaking, sorry to cut you short, uh, there's, 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 there's a condition in which one can actually be low in sugar, and that is what we call hypoglycemia. And this is like patients who have diabetes, if probably they take their insulin short or consume, uh, you know, overdose on certain medication and they're not taking their meals properly or they delay their meals, then they're likely to go into hypoglycemia. This can also occur in people who are consuming a lot of alcohol and probably not feeding or even in certain medical conditions like liver failure, kidney failure and that kind of stuff. So, but hypoglycemia in normal individuals, it's very rare. Okay. Unless one has head surgery. So I'm going shopping in my mind, even mm -hmm. for the sake of our audience who could probably be taking down notes. Isaac had mentioned sweet potatoes as a gold alternative. Oh, yes, it's good. What else? What else? What else? Oh, there, there, there are lots of things. So um, let's think in terms of just carbohydrates, because yes. sugar is it's just a simple form of carbohydrates. Uh -huh. So we have sweet potatoes, like Isaac has mentioned. We have uh, green bananas. Uh, we have... Uh, Potatoes themselves, Irish potatoes, but remember again, cooking method matters. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have fruits themselves, you know, all sorts of fruits. Of course, some have more sugar than others. Uh, we, we have then the oats, we, we have, and beware of breakfast cereals now that breakfast is happening or has just happened. A lot of them have, are laden with sugar. The cereals themselves? Oh, yes. The conflicts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them have added sugar. And that's why we love to remind people, we guys in the field, we love to remind people to read nutritional information. I'm so guilty, Dr. Esther, especially <laughs> that you mentioned cereal. Because what I tend to do with my cereals, um, milk, then a bit of sugar, then I still slice bananas. That's too much sugar. So the cereals already have sugar, then sugar you add itself. in some sugar, and maybe and you even add honey. Banana, and, yeah. and then some banana. And uh -huh. the, yeah, one has to be loading. What? One has to, I'd rather you stick with the banana as opposed to the added sugar and pick your cereals, you know, in a smart way. Right. No one has paid me to, sp but most of the cereals, please read the nutritional information. This added sugar in like 90. And they write it clearly, it. added sugar. No, they won't. Oh, that's so what, what that do you look out for, Isaac? Um, you'll, um, most of the times you will see. Uh, the nutritional facts are at the back of every pack of, you know, most processed foods. Right. Uh, carbohydrates. So they have the carbohydrates part. And uh, they'll say carbohydrates, let's say 49. And then they'll say, um, they'll term it. There, there's a way they'll term it. And then you'll see 30 grams sugar or 30 grams. There's a way they'll say. So which is the health? Which, which, how do I know I'm healthy? When I'm shopping, which, which when I'm reading for the so, carbohydrates or the grams, like you've said, yes. which is the safe side, Dr. Esther? Actually, like you said, there's that nutritional information. It's usually a list, and most of the time they'll give you per 100 grams or serving. Let's say it's a yogurt. So you, you'll see they tend to list the top, you know, the, 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 the plenty, the, the, the components that are in bigger volumes. Like, let's say fat. Uh, in milk might be, in, in a yogurt, maybe 3.5 grams per 100 grams. Uh, then then uh, there'll, there'll be carbohydrates, which will be about 4.8 grams. But then the, in carbohydrate, it could be even 10. You know, If it's natural, it might be 4.5. It's, if it's flavored because there's added sugar, mm. then it will be like 10. And then you have to begin, because there are some other names they might use, this fructose, uh, uh, there could be sucrose. So you, you, you have to be very keen. If it doesn't really Really make much sense to you, please Google it up, check it out. There, there are many terminologies uh, of, of, of sugar that are out there that are added to, to, oh. to sweeten the Isaac, products. let's talk about alternatives. Isaac, what alternatives do Kenyans have, healthy alternatives and affordable alternatives? To sugar? Yes, please. Uh, that, that just goes to what I said earlier. Finding uh, sweet potatoes are very cheap to find. Cheap uh, sweet potatoes are, are, are 
are good for generally for your energy and uh, they are good substitute as well instead of having you know processed processed uh, cereals mm -hmm. uh, you know all this conflict blah 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 all these cereals that people have in the morning which are processed uh, you can switch them up for sweet potatoes how is honey and syrup does that actually do the trick or just people are enjoying themselves <laughs> It hardly does anything. Uh, okay, the... it does more harm than good. But uh, let, let me say again, I say, if you can't burn it, don't consume it. But let's say, it depends on your goals. Like someone who is really trying to lose weight, I would really advise them to cut out on sugar, cut out on honey, cut out on maple syrup, and, and all those other syrups. So, and switch up for so when I put, alternatives. When someone puts honey or sugar, sorry, sugar, honey, or syrup. They're just being... the same. It's They're so cross. All those other things, that there's a lot of hype about about other nutrients and vitamins, they are stress. You can get them from other foods that have less calories. There's hardly any benefit from consuming okay. them. Okay, so you've had <laughs> folks who are being bougie and they put sugar, uh, sorry, syrup and honey in exchange for sugar. There's no difference. Dr. Esther herself has It's more it. of taste. If you choose to have it, you can probably go for honey because you like how it tastes. But just know that the calories, in fact, in honey are higher than in sugar itself. So the thing is, if you're within a healthy weight, you can just reduce how much you're consuming. But if you consume in excess, you're likely to store, uh, you know, it as fat. Speaking so. of fat, Isaac, is there a difference between when an individual is burning weight that is fat and weight that is sugar now that we've learned that sugar <laughs> can be hidden and is it, will someone have a different diet or in a different exercise regime um what i can say is uh we can say generally people who are consuming uh, uh simple sugars who might have a slightly harder time losing their weight more True. than people who are, are consuming complex carbohydrates it's very true it's very true Okay, that treadmill, wow. <laughs> yeah, but, but then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people assume, okay, fine, I'm not doing sugar. Like, I have not added sugar in my beverages for the last 10 years. I have not. But you could compensate and feel like, okay, I've earned this, and then you go heap a lot of rice, or oh. heap, eat lots of sweet potatoes. It, I said all these things have calories. So don't eat too much thinking that, okay, it's healthy, I can have, like, 100 kgs of it, no, you still have to limit your, your portions. But like he, Isaac has said, if you're consuming sugar, it's going to be hard to lose weight. And you know what? <laughs> Insulin again. Oh, Insulin yes. serves to keep the sugars low and pack your fat in the cells and keep the fat in the stores. So, so long as your sugar is high, insulin is high, come on, girl, that fat is going to remain packed in that belly and wherever else it is. Ooh, wee. That's okay, true. Isaac, I think that's true. That's true. <laughs> Supplements. Let's yes. talk about supplements. Yes. What, how do supplements help? And are they an alternative, a healthy alternative? Tell mm -hmm. me more about that. Um, supplements are, uh, are good, I can say that, because most people have in the past uh, related supplements to steroids. Mm -hmm. And uh, supplements help to get, to give your body what you're not getting in your diet. Or being um, a convenient source of nutrients. For instance, you want, um, you want 25, uh, 25 grams of protein really fast in a dash. You got in, you're getting into your house, maybe you want to change up real quick, dash for another meeting or something, and you want 25 grams of protein. So you might have a quick shake. You see, it's convenient. It's easy, it's, it's convenient. But then again, it comes to um, there are certain uh, uh, nutrients that we're not getting in our diets. Uh, maybe you're not getting sufficient fish oils. Maybe you're not into uh, fish oils and yeah. uh, you're not into eating fish and something like mm -hmm. that. You might want to supplement with fish oils to get your omega 3s. Um, uh, creatine, people maybe who are training a lot and uh, maybe they're not consuming a lot of uh, red meat, they might not be getting their creatine levels up. So you might. Sub so generally, what you're trying to do is getting, um, getting the nutrients that you're not getting from your diet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right, Dr. Esther, please I'll, 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 I'll take a different uh, look at it. And I think you're talking about sugar substitutes. And um, in, in this case, for people who want to switch from sugar and, and still want something sweet, at less calories, there are actually options. And some of them, we have some natural uh, uh, substances like stevia, which is which ha actually has no calories, and uh, it's, it's like 200 times much sweeter than sugar. Then, of course, we have other substitutes that are what you call polyols or, or yeah, they're kind of 
alcohols, but not even all. It's not they're not like the alcohol yeah. that is in alcohol beverages. So things like sorbitol or xylitol that can be added, like to uh, you know chewing gum. Sometimes are being used even in foods. So so that these ones have some calories because they're actually carbohydrates, but they will have like you know two calor calories per, 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 per gram as opposed to sugar that has as four and such. So they they have less calories and not all everything is absorbed. And these ones, but if consumed in excess. Can, can give some GI disturbance, that's gut disturbance, like bloating and that kind of stuff. Then there are those ones we call high intensity sweeteners. They are like hundreds of times more sweet than sugar at no calories. Most people are now opting for these and it's a big industry. With no calories. And, yeah, there are no Please calories. Name them. <laughs> There are many different types, like they are aspartame. Most of them end with M A M E. So the 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 new term. There there are quite a number of them. And of course, one of the older ones is saccharin, that was associated with bladder cancer in rats. But let me not scare anyone. They are all approved. <laughs> but the thing is, we don't know the long term effects of this uh, of this. Um, sweeteners, but they've been approved as safe. So for someone who wants to have zero calories and still wants something sweet, they, they can try this. But I would say I'd rather someone starts cutting back on sugar gradually and tries to avoid using these sweeteners because they make you so used to sweet things that you tend to avert, uh, to be avert to, to you know, ordinary foods that are not so sweet. And yeah, but they're an option at zero calories. But the problem is some people tend to compensate and you're consuming this. And studies are showing that people consuming uh, these sweeteners are tending to be obese, have type 2 diabetes, strange. But you how? think? But, and, and you I, said there are no calories. We don't know the reasons why, but uh, it's, it's possible that people tend to overcompensate and consume. You feel like you earned it. I consume something zero calories so I can eat. Uh, you know, a piece of cake because I didn't consume it or, or have more chapatis or that kind of stuff. We don't know why, but I, I'd rather you train yourself not to have them, but they're, they're still an option. Okay, before we close off the conversation, I think it's very important to talk about um, other places that sugar is found in, like, for example, our soda. And let's help, let's, you guys can help us debunk this myth. I've seen YouTube videos of why soda is not healthy. So, you know, they sort of um, evaporate it and then you're left with a can like, like this. Like and exactly, of sugar, yeah. yeah. And you find that half of that soda was just liquid and the rest was completely sugar. That's a it, fact. And that's a fact. And that's, that's why fact. soda is unhealthy. <laughs> but then again, your body at some point, you, you're like, oh my goodness, I could use a really cold crest right now. <laughs> so just help us understand how we can get behind this whole um, soda issue, what we can um, do when it comes to probably liquids that are alternatives for sugar, Dr. Terry? Uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has actually put some caps as, as to how much sugar you can consume in a day. Okay. For, for women, it should be a limit of up to six teaspoons, and, and for men, up to nine teaspoons. But the problem is, this sugar is not even coming from the added sugar as we know it. You could be even below that limit, but still be cons consuming in excess. Why? Because besides the soda you've talked about, that it's obvious that it's just sugar in water and some other things to make you not nauseated and all that, there are so many other foods that have added sugar. I mean, when you're consuming bread, before you smear it with jam, you may not realize that it already has sugar. And I just mentioned jam. Jam has lots of sugar. Some of the sauces, even barbecue sauces, have sugar. You know, our, our, our tomato sauce or ketchup has Does peanut lots butter of have sugar. sugar? Yeah, yeah, most of it is added. I go back to the nutritional information, the sugar, lots of it. It's, they, it's not hidden, it's a fact. But the thing is, you can still consume it, but even out things. If you know you're really active and you're seeing, let me tell you, your body tells you, you cannot run from it. If you're overweight or obese, it means you're consuming in excess. Then you have to cut back on those hidden sugars. Isaac, I want you to have the last say. Yes. Why is it so difficult mm -hmm. um, for people, and I'm a victim, mm -hmm. to take water yeah. compared to soda? Now that we're talking about what other things are, like where sugar is found, yeah. It's much easier to take juice, yeah. um, soda, but then water. It's so difficult. I'll let you have the last say with this. Uh, it goes back to the first point that I said. I said when you consume sugar, your body likes it a lot. Your body, it, it is proven that uh, sugar is actually eight times more uh, addictive than cocaine. No, I... Yes. So um, what happens is your body really gets a very, very, you know, it likes the sugar, it likes the, it likes the feeling of sugar. So you get the craving and the cycle keeps going on and on. So like I said, it spikes up, goes down very fast, you go down to craving it, you consume it again.
So that's, so, so it's not my fault that the body doesn't want to. No, but you can change that. You, it thing. starts here. Yes. You have to decide and start mm -hmm. reducing. Like if you're doing a soda daily, you can now do it three times a week and cut like once a week. The thing is that it's not a no go zone, but really limit it because you're investing into your future. If you don't take your care of your health mm -hmm. now, then you'll spend time in the hospital later. All right. That's true. You have one body to carry you through life. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. One body to carry you through your life. We're going to leave it on such a positive <laughs> note. Dr. Esther and Isaac, thank you so much for being here. Thank Isaac Ithuku, who is a fitness consultant, as well as Dr. Esther Dindia, consultant, physician, plus a wellness expert and founder of Dr. Fitness Kenya. I hope you've learned something new. I have, and I have a lot of work to do, but I also hope that you've also learned something new. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll bring you up to speed with stories making um, headlines on the international front.